Hello, my name is Mark Jeffrey, and you are listening to episode 16 of the Mark Jeffrey Podcast Show, brought to you by MPC Solutions. Guess who's back? Back again. Yes, hello, you beautiful, beautiful podcasters. It's me, Mark Jeffrey, here with you once again for episode 16, I think it is now, of the Mark Jeffrey Podcast Show. My apologies for not being with you last week. If you was bored and tuned in and you couldn't hear me, my apologies. It was half term here in the UK, so I had to take the little kiddie winks and the girlfriend down to our beautiful caravan for an amazing adventure in our life, a week of happiness in the Cornish sun. Anyway, I've just this minute finished an amazing interview with an amazing chap, a good, good friend of mine. He is called Liam Cloak. Very, very interesting. Very, very funny co-presenter friend of mine. So stay tuned for that. We also have music from the very, very talented Roz Birch. She's given us two songs to play for you tonight, and you are going to love it. You are going to love this episode, so stay tuned. Here comes the amazing Liam Cloak. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, can I just introduce you to an amazing chap? I'm really, really looking forward to having a chat to him on this episode. He is the legend that is Liam Cloak. Hello. I was going to call hello, you hello. Leroy Ham then. I could see you thinking about what else you were going to call me there. How the devil is it, mate? It's been a long time no see. Well, I see you most days, but what I mean is like in a, a radio sense. We, we don't talk. We don't talk anymore. <laughs> isn't it? it's, it's so funny how we don't talk anymore. How is it then anyway? What have no, you been up to? No, really good, mate. Really good. So how how long have we known each other? It's, it must be about four or so years i'd say it's probably it might be five or six even yeah yeah and um we Feels like longer yeah we started <laughs> off um i came into a delivery office that you work for because as you're aware we are both postmen Ooh. and i i came into saltash delivery office and um Lee, liam was a bit of like i always saw liam as a bit of the nerdy geeky one and i kind of got a bit of an attraction to you like that if you know what i mean okay <laughs> no, I, I was into my ham radio, wasn't I, if you remember? Oh, you were, yeah, no. I used to do my old ham radio, and um, you always sh- showed an interest in ham radio. Yeah. For people at home that don't know what ham radio is, look it up. It's, um, yeah, look it up. It's like, it's like a glorified CB ra- radio where you talk to people all around the world. It's basi- basically... Oh, is that how you describe it? Facebook of the kind of 1800s and... Yeah. Isn't it, really? And Social I, media. I was doing that, and you, you was kind of interested in it, and then... Yeah. One day, um, I decided that I was going to become, try and become a, a radio presenter. And yeah. You, and you liked the sound of that, didn't you? And I, I was I was looking for a co-presenter. I was a um, presenter at a station in Plymouth, which is in Southwest UK, and it is called um, Eat Music. And I was looking for a co-presenter because it was good. I was enjoying doing presenting, but it wasn't, I needed somebody to bounce off. And I can tell you at home this bloke here is one of the most funniest people in the world with <laughs> such the driest sense of humour, and I had to get him as my co-presenter. Isn't that about Thank right? Thank you very much. No, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, yeah, so what have you been up to then? Because like I say, we was on, we, we'll talk a little bit more about radio in a second and our, what we've been up to. Um, but um, we, we, we've been doing radio for about four years, but in the last, I'd say, what, two or three months, we've kind of like hit the nail on the head, haven't we? Yeah, we we get, we've given it uh, well a bit of a rest. I think while we come up with some other ideas, and uh, hopefully, I think we'll get some ideas soon. So it's maybe. been it's been about two months since we've last done anything together in the studio, isn't it? Yeah, few few changes in the studio here. There are a few changes. Yeah. Do, you, do you like the new microphone? I do. I do. It sounded very good. We've we've gone from condenser microphones. Yeah. To the dime. Oh, I can never say it. What is it? Dymatic microphone. You are. I, it's 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 called the Procaster. It's made by Rode. We're professionals, and um, it makes us sound a lot better. I think. It is very clear, yeah. very clear. Yeah, are you liking it? You got you got to get almost eat the microphone, haven't you? Uh, yeah, no, sorry, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> it sounded very good. So there you are. So uh, 
Liam is also into his homebrew. He loves homebrew. Ooh, uh, what, have yes. you got anything on the barrel at the moment? Anything I have. On the go? What I've have you got going? Got an Irish stout. That's, that's that's probably ready the next week or two. Really, yeah. I'm going to try a few bottles of that. How many bottles do you make? Like in one in one well, splash. I've got twenty bottles of cider. Actually, no, forty. So I didn't have all the bottles. So I've had to barrel some of it because the, the cider wasn't particularly nice. I'm hoping it is now. Why was that then? Why do you reckon? Just do you get some batches sometimes that are I was a load of crap? Evidently, trying. I was drinking too much cider when I was making it. I think <laughs> you're also into your port. I am. You, you like port. You kind of got me into that. Actually, that sounds really strange. But you, it was. I, it was one Christmas. I do believe, you, wasn't it? You said, "Here, Liam, you want to try this port?" So I did. Yeah, and do you know do what? You like I've it? actually got some here now. Have you? I've got a special reserve port. Um, and it's made by it's made by Waitrose, I think, or a Tesco's brand. I'm not quite sure. I got it for my birthday, right? I got that one there. Yeah. And I've I've also got um, a little little bit of a fine ruby port here that I want you to try. We know how to live, people. This is the life. Yeah, this is life. They're going to give you a little skeet here now to try. I've oh, got a proper glass and everything. Yeah, I got these port glasses glasses for Christmas. So have a little try on that. Ooh. I'm going to eat cheese, I'm afraid. Ooh, it's got a snazzy bouquet. Yeah, have a little, have a little try on that, and tell me what you think. Good, good, this, isn't it? It's, just, it's like Radio Four. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, sipping on port while doing doing a podcast. And now the archers. Yeah, you're really, really good. Oh, so nice. while you're sipping on that port, I've got. Don't take too long to drink it because <laughs> I've got some more for you to try here in a minute. Oh, lovely! A, a different brand. Um, we want to talk about your music that you listen to. What your, your genre of music? Tell the people at home what what. What floats your boat? Well, basically, I like everything really from the 50s onwards, really. Today's stuff, just everything mixed in, mate. 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. 90s. 2000s, mate. A- anything and everything. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they called it the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. Then they went into the noughties, didn't they? Mm. Well, now we're in, the, we're in 2017. What era of music is that? Um... I don't know. I never really thought of it, to be honest. Because, you know... I thought of the, ni- the noughties. My kids that are growing up, you know, when I was younger, I said I was into the 90s. What are my kids going to say? Oh, yeah, I'm into the... Um, what, what do they call it? I think it's so, like, opened up now that... I don't know. I honestly don't. But I think it's good to like every kind of music, really. Is, is music crap now, though, compared to what it I'm used to be? I'm not going to say it's crap, because there is some still, still some really good stuff out there. If you look beyond, like, the top 20 into the 30 and 40, actually, there's some good stuff. It might not be popular, but... Are you, have you got your fingers crossed behind your back here now? What are you mm. talking? <laughs> <laughs> so, what, since I last saw you, yep. what yep. what bands have you been in seeing? Because I know you like to go and see a bit of live music. We've got a venue here in, well, over the water in Devon mm. called The Pavilions. Not the best sound in the world, but they get we get a lot of um, acts down there. Have you seen anything recently? You know what? I have, and I've completely forgotten who it was. Good then. Yeah. I'm sure I told you all about it. Come on, prompt me. Um, I don't know. I, t- I don't saw know. something. Blondie was down there recently. Did you go and see Blondie? Didn't see Blondie. I'll give you a clue. Ooh, la, she yeah, was no, there, there we go. No, I was going to say, no, it was actually a really good gig and I didn't have anything to drink either. It, no, that was the, the kooks. kooks. The kooks, yeah. The kooks are out. No, they really were good. Yeah. Like you say, the sound is absolutely terrible there. But, it's kind of good to say you've seen the kooks. If you're listening and you work in the pavilions in Plymouth, oi, you, get it sorted. Your music sounds crap. It's kind of the place, though. They, they're they never going to change it because it's got to be a basketball place. It's got to be everything, isn't it? So isn't it? it's a compromise, isn't it? Yeah. A, f- a yeah. friend of mine, Steve, he went and watched Adam and the Ant, and I was going to go and watch him down there a couple of weeks ago, but apparently he said it was shocking. He says yeah. he, Adam and Ant, he didn't sound that great, and, and the sound didn't help him at all. And Steve, it's quite funny because Steve was sat up on the balcony watching Adam and Ant. Oh, and uh, <laughs> he said people were just getting up and walking off. I can't believe it, but you can pay a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, for some of the tickets for in the pavilions. But I, the but, Kooks, yeah. going back to the Kooks, I seen the Kooks down the Eden Project. Yeah, and um, they were good, but the problem was it was just loads of little little teeny boppers at the front and that boys about the same age fighting and it was just like put it right off See, they haven't got that problem anymore because it's 10 years on yeah but they are good looking boys now that it's a good good group to see live really placebo are you a placebo fan not really no well they are playing in the pavilions in october and i'm looking for a buddy to go down maybe that could be a way to get into it so you've got between now and october to start liking um 
start liking Mate, I could placebo. Just, I could just turn up and watch them. That wouldn't be the first time. Everyone's seen a lot. I have not got a clue of the words. £45 a ticket then. Maybe I won't then. <laughs> Best of so, it is. So, <laughs> what, what music are you listening to at the moment then? Not like as we talk. I'm you know I mean, listening but... to, I bought two records uh, of new records, or fairly new records. One was by Dan Auerbach, um, who was in the Black Keys. Oh, I like so, the Black Keys. So a fairly big, but he's kind of, he, they, you know, doing their own stuff. And he's kind of, um, brought out a new album. In fact, that was on the second of June. So I bought the uh, the LP. It's really, really good. Like this port. I've just poured you another port glass. Thank you very he's much. Just, he's just noshed one port down. He's now on the special reserve port, a rich and full bodied port with a smooth, ripe, spicy character. I've got another twelve bottles to get. Through. Selected by Tesco's. This one was it? Yeah. So yeah. So you you in? What, what, I wasn't really listening to what you were saying. Then, no, but thank guys you. Guys at home was. So who was the person that you said uh, you've been listening to? Dan Auerbach. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his second name. But in any case, don't no, get me started on names. No, no, it is really good. No, if you like your poppy kind of rock and rolly country, a bit like George Harrison, really, a little bit like uh, Traveling Wilburys or something like that, it is really really good. Yeah. We've we've been talking in previous weeks conspiracy theories. Have you? Yeah. Um, and I ask you to check out the Mandela effect. I don't even have to ask you if you've listened, checked it out, because I know for a fact you haven't. Um, oh, but, ye of little faith. But have you? Have you? No. No. Well, we, the reason why I say it is because you were just talking about George Harrison. Do you believe the tripe that's going around that's about Paul McCartney is, or is he not dead? Yeah, but that started way back in the day, didn't it? That, but what do you think? Well, I think... For record sales, it's probably quite good that they think that he's he's dead, isn't it? Who was it that now? Who was the last one left in the Beatles? The other one, not Paul McCartney. The other one, oh Ringo's Ringo. Ringo's still very much going. He's going to outlive everyone in the world. Thing is, it was Ringo announced that Paul McCartney was dead. I think a week and a half before his new album was coming out. Yeah, mm. well, I, I think historically they've pretty much done that right through all of the Beatles stuff and they referenced Paul is dead and they played it backwards in some of the things Paul is dead and and all stuff like that the album when they're, they're crossing the road on Abbey Road, Abbey road. and um, one's dressed as a grave digger the other one's an angel one's not wearing shoes yeah. and all that kind of thing I think it was just to sell records it's quite a good lie it's, good, though, though. Isn't it? it's, it's a good, good lie so anyway we'll, we'll, we'll talk tuck, cut the jibber jabber oh, yeah. we're going to talk radio for a little bit now oh. um, because yeah. like I say I haven't done any live radio now for about three months um and to be fair mate i'm not missing it no i'm not missing it well you're doing well mate you're you're you know you you're doing very well i see you in the streets being stopped for autographs (laughs) that was funny actually i I haven't been stopped for an autograph but when i was on my post round the other day i stopped into the undertakers in saltash oh god um that's a small town where we live in Tough, tough crowd in cornwall not many miles from london and on an, a lady said to me, she says, are you the bloke that does the radio show? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, all right, okay. And that was it. That's all she said. Oh, my dad listens to you. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. But at least I'm getting recognised. I yeah. just didn't particularly want it to be in The Undertakers, that's all. <laughs> um, but yeah, we started radio, it must be nearly four years ago it's now. It's got to be, isn't it, mate? And we was, um, we went, we was, well, we done a bit of work for a small outfit in Plymouth, a community radio station called Eat Music. Remember those days? Eat Music, mate. It was a good place. It really is, and it's from what I see, it's it's well, I want to say up and coming. It's it's doing really well. Check it out, guys. www.eatmusic.co.uk, I think it is. A lot of good people, a lot of talented people. Uh, sound. We had some good days there, didn't we? I I, I remember it. You, it was a, a small studio above a pub. Yeah. Um, what was the roundabout, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. The studio was until we got booted out because one of the presenters was smoking marijuana. I believe so. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> Wasn't you? Was it? God no, 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 no. But it was it was good old days. We had a um, a good little setup there. We used to do a show. It started off as an hour, and then because we was huge international stars, we went up to two hours. Oh mate, we had to sell the tour bus and buy a bigger one, didn't we? Nine. Remember in the nineties, the show was cool, wasn't it? It was. Remember you, in the nineties, what was it about? I can't remember. I think it was something to do with the nineties, wasn't it? Well, the reason why I ask: <laughs> Are you my boss? Yes. <laughs> It's a little personal joke, yeah. Are you, are you my boss? I am your boss. Cool. All right. Yeah, we've done a, a show called Remember in the 90s. Um, and it was what it said on the tin. 
It was a show we were remembering the nineties and we used to, it was two hours long mm-hmm. and we used to have, we used to invite bands in and solo artists and they used to come in and do a nineties cover. And then they used to do one of their own, I do believe, didn't they? And yeah. We've done little things like cheesy moments. That was really good. We got we had some good covers as well, you know, as originals. We had some really, really good artists come in. Oh, used to fill the room out. Remember that? We're just moving about just to fill in about seven or eight people. It was good. Like, arriving at the studio like two minutes before we was going on air. There's some other cello get, outside or something. Having to do a, a sound check. Good old days, eat music. So we had some bands on there. Um, one of the bands we had in was a band called Last Orders. I don't know if you can remember them. I can indeed. And there was a girl called Roz Birch. She was the lead singer for them. I do. And um, in a second, I'm going to play you one of, the, one of her songs because she is this week's unsigned artist that we're going to play. Um, and I asked her to send me in a couple of her songs and she said her words exactly. I am a singer. Song white, song writer, <laughs> song writer, based in Plymouth, with a voice everyone says was made for soul. I was recently told I soothe people's souls, and she said she quite liked the compliment. Good yeah, on her. No, good that's, on her. That's a good compliment. Um, and yeah, so she, she's really, really good. I mean, I played you the, a couple of her songs just a minute ago, um, Liam, didn't I? Yeah. Um, and we're going to play track number one that she sent in. It's called Brighter Now. And it's taken from her debut EP, Finally Free. And that was released back in February 2016. And if you want to get it, it is available on Spotify. So get over to Spotify Excellent. and check it out. But I think you're really, really going to like this one. Um it's just, how, how would you describe it? A voice, I don't know what it is, but I, I've heard like that style before. It's almost like a, um, what would you say? Like an, an 80s Atlantis well, Morissette she, sort of. Um, as she says, it is real soulful, you know, and it's, it just, it's, it does sound beautiful. But sh- uh, Should we play it? Let's play it.
so there we have it pot pickers that is brighter now by ros birch yeah what do you think mate yeah really really good wasn't it i said you'd like really, that really beautiful so that that was all about that and we're going to be um we're moving on from eat music because we was talking about eat music just a minute ago wasn't we and um our radio career how it's expanded and we left eat music after what was it about a year might have been just over, yeah. Something yeah, like that. I think that. it was around Christmas time. You and me just said, oh, I fancy something different, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I think it was all those nights we was sat looking across to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, you can't call it Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's KFC, isn't it? It is. Because it's not chickens you eat anymore. That's it's an official title. Yeah. Modified meat. Yeah. Chickens with no legs and no wings and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we <laughs> making me hungry. We I I decided that it was time for a change because it's always me. Well, you, it's, it's all you, about me. You pull rank, didn't you? Yeah. And I decided that I was going to set up a temporary studio. I'm um, in my house. Yeah. Um, and we was going to go from there and see if we could get some work. It didn't actually. We didn't start off in the house. We started off in my cold garage at my old house. Do you remember that? We did. We did. I do remember it. I can't, and we was going to go live on air with a station from up in Wigan. Can you remember it was? But it never Wigan, actually took off. Wigan, Wigan. Are you there, Wigan? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it never actually took off. I don't know what happened. I think I got, they sacked me even before I um, done a show. <laughs> Less said about that, the better. Yeah, so we joined um, a local outfit down in Cornwall they, from Bobman. Bobman. And they were called, well, they still are called NCB Radio. NCB. Um, stands for uh, North Cornwall Broadcasting. Exactly. And um, I'm we, glad I remembered. What, was it two years we was with, uh, with NCB? I think it was about two years, wasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic days. Fantastic oh, went, times. Went from strength strength to strength, and the people really passionate people, and getting to meet them at the festivals, and you know, just really good bunch of people. Really we, hardworking. We done a show on a Monday night called Funny Enough. Um, the Monday night jukebox. We did. Again, it was what it said on the tin. It was on a Monday night and it was a jukebox that played tunes requested by our listeners. Music, music all and two, chat. All two of them. Yeah, all two. And um, <laughs> <laughs> from eight till 10 every Monday, we used to entertain the masses of two people. Yeah, there was more than that. Come on. Yeah, we had, I think some nights we had three or four people listening. I was listening as well. <laughs> no, it was good, good days. No, it was. It really and, was. And um, a cracking station. Um, check them out, um, www.ncbradio.co.uk. Um, they would like that extra listener, I'm sure. And um, yeah, but it, what was your favourite part um, with NCB? Um, I'll have a slur- slurp of coffee right. while you drink well, your port. Probably, well, I've drunk it. <laughs> probably, like I said, like the social side of it, getting to meet people because with NCB you were... Uh, broadcasting from studios in your own home or smaller, oh, yeah, smaller yeah. studios. So it was good to, you weren't actually, like with Eat Music, you were meeting up every week. But it's, it's nice to meet up with people and, and kind of... That was all to do some slightly with me as well. Because NCB, just before I joined them, they had their own studio in the watering hole in a, a little pub down in Bodmin. And you, I said... You didn't that, get him kicked out of there, No, no, you? not at all. No, I didn't go down there smoking marijuana and we got booted out or Again. anything like that. No, it, it was um, because I said that I would like to come and work for them, do some work for them, but I wasn't prepared to drive down to Bobbin. Would you allow me to work from home? And I think I'd done that, and all of a sudden everybody realised, well, yeah, we can get people from Canada, presenters from Canada. You're and a pioneer. All over the place. You're a pioneer. Pioneer my ear. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we've done some lots of good stuff with um, NCB. I, I would say my most brilliantest most excellent experience with ncb radio was doing the rock oyster festival yeah no i think that's up there the rock oyster festival was one of my favorites too yeah really enjoyed that we used to go down there boys and girls and we used to do the um, oh. kids tent didn't we <laughs> oh. <laughs> two years of doing I the d- kids tent oh. like, like liam dancing around trying to drag the kids into into this um the arena while i was playing cheesy music all i can remember is it was the hottest flipping day on record <laughs> we were sleeping in a tent we drank so much cider we did didn't we alcohol kills drink sensibly um but yeah. Oh. Well, no, it didn't. No, on the first night, the Friday night when we got there, you was drinking slow gin and eating black chocolate. 
I was. That, that's a terrible mix. Yeah, and then you then you went back to your tent early because you I think you had a little a little throw up moment, didn't you? No, 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 no. And I stayed out and partied for a little bit longer. The next day, I got up in the morning about nine o'clock and decided I wanted to get up and have a wee and have a walk. So I walked down and you says, oh, I'll join you. So you followed me and we was, we wasn't dressed or nothing, was it really? It was in like a oh. shorts and t-shirt from the <laughs> night before. And um, there was a, a, it was a, um, what was it? It was a horse box, I think, wasn't it? It's was doing breakfast. It was like one of these, yeah. And I'll tell you what, that was the best breakfast bap I've ever had. What was it again? Well, Can you it remember? Was, it was egg, the thickest bacon you've ever seen in your life, avocado. Avocado. And, and also they cut off, it, it was like a half a flipping loaf of bread each, wasn't it? I had a beard at the time, then I remember I bit into it and all the yolk went all dummy beard everywhere. I've got egg what everywhere. Yeah, so no, that was that. Good. We had we had a nice, nice breakfast. And then we decided, oh, we'll have a little walk around. And I spotted this cider tent next to the next to the oyster tent, because it's Rock Oyster Festival. They do oysters there. Yeah, I'm glad we went with the... We didn't have any oysters. I'm glad we went with the uh, alcohol-based one. But I tell you what, I can't remember yeah. what cider company that was, but can you remember that cider that he was pumping through it, it, a Guinness Cool Flow? He set up... Or it, Smooth Flow. Oh, I remember being, after four or five pints, still impressed by the fact he had it coming through a Guinness um, tap on draft, and it was so smooth. Oh, so we said we was going to have one of these and then we was going to go back with, back to our tent and get ready. What we meant was one barrel each. Well, this was about nine o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? Oh. I think about one, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. We were still sat there from the in our clothes from the night before. I don't think we could move. In the beaming hot sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> and, our, and we was totally, I don't want to say, we was totally shit-faced really, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> can't, put it, can't put it any better than that. Well lubricated. So, yeah. yeah, so we had some good times of NCB yeah. and um, I think two or three months ago we decided that we was going to have a break and um, we was we, we was talking about going down the freelance route, wasn't we? Yeah. And we haven't actually done anything more. We haven't really. We've come up with ideas and, or a few little bits and pieces. All, are, you, are you my boss? All kind of similar to, uh, to other uh, things that we've done and we kind of wanted to try something completely different but we're still not settled on it so if anyone's got any ideas well no I mean I'm not going to start phoning we have got some ideas in a sense of what I said I want to do is I want to do a show don't go live anymore but to record it and get, we was going to go freelance around the world dish it out wasn't we yeah the problem is I've started up this podcast and we'll talk about that in a minute and um, <laughs> the thing is with I've just lost a bit of love for radio and I haven't got the time for doing it all. Well, it's it's kind of, it is still radio and it? it's still transmission of stuff to people. Well, what is your definition of a podcast? I ask this to, to a lot of my, um, my people that come in, you know, the people I interview, what is your, what would your definition of a podcast well, it, be? It, it's hard to define it though, isn't it? Because most radio shows, and I listen to a fair few of them on the kind of commercial radio, they do actually turn the shows that on Saturday mornings into, um, Oh yeah, more port. Mine's a pint. All right, so um, <laughs> yeah, no, they do. They do actually turn their shows into podcasts as well, so you can listen to it live, or you can listen to it usually without all the the music and the commercials. Anyway, can you? I think we can say that the definition of a cheers. podcast. <laughs> cheers. cheers. I'll drink my coffee. You drink the port. Yeah. Um, I think we can safely say the definition of a podcast is a radio sort of based thing um, with not any music perhaps and recorded so people can listen to it as they wish. I always think it's a bit like a diary, isn't it? It's, it's like you're writing down stuff that you've seen in your week. Podcasts, I, I bloody love them. Yeah. I think it was that you mentioned to me um, when, when I very first started radio, mm. why don't you do a podcast? Can you remember that? It's my fault, is it? Well, no, because I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't listen to you. I never listened to you. No, no, but he does. You, you did say to me about podcasts mm -hmm. and I just never, um, I was, I wanted to be a radio presenter. Podcast didn't do anything for me. To me I, I to, tell you what, mate, I am addicted to them now. To me, it's very similar, but it's at the same time, it is completely different, isn't it? Yeah. I'm addicted. I listen well, to, to the, the um, Joe Rogan podcast and there's a couple i listen to about four different podcasts a week now with joe rogan he brings out about three three hour podcasts a week mm. so that kind of like when i'm when i'm on my post round i'm listening to joe rogan 
blaring out of my phone um, and a lot of the F-bombs are going while I get to, when I get to the door of people. You know, it can have a signature, please. At times. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> but yeah, pod, are, you, are you a podcaster? Do, are I'm, you a podcast fan, shall I, I say? I must admit, I do like a podcast, really. I do. It tends to be, or when I've like been on a train or somewhere like that and, you know, on a train for three, three and a half hours, you listen to a couple half an hour, one to them, it does make time fly by. Any that you would like to suggest to anybody or just none off the top of your head well i've I've always liked when i first started listening to podcasts on absolute radio um it's the frank skinner show yeah and you can listen to it saturday morning but like i say they cut down all the they take the music out and they just basically it's just them talking and they go through every week and it's it's interesting to to hear it and there's another one that i've not that long ago started listening to and it's bob mortimer and it's another what, from Reeves and Water, that yeah, problem. and another chap called Andy something, and I've the last name. It's called Atletico Mints, and it's supposed <laughs> to be it's supposed to be a football podcast, but there's very rarely any talk of football. But there's impressions, and there's it is it's mad. It's like shooting stars, but in a flipping in a podcast. You've got to listen to it. I've got a new idea, and it's um it's something that I'm going to be airing out to you at home. Oh, and it's going to be a one off thing. I had the idea the other day about an adult podcast and um, I'm going to call it my drunk cast. So it's going to be the Mark Jeffrey drunk cast show. I better be there. And um, (laughs) the idea is, is the table that's behind me. I'm going to make that into like a temporary podcasting table. Okay. And we're going to have microphones all over it. And I'm going to get about four people in the studio at a time. And it's going to be on a Saturday evening. It's going to be recorded. And we're just going to sit there with any alcohol that we can find. Well, you say any alcohol. And I've if got any, about 60 pints of it I can bring over. If anybody wants to bring <laughs> any drugs in, I'm not con- condoning, oh. you know, I'm not um, oh, a, come a drug on taker. But it's, Let's stick with the alcohol. Yeah. That'll be and enough. Basically, <laughs> basically, we're just going to have an adult night in the studio here. Now the podcast may last an hour. It might last for three hours, but I am going to cap it at three hours. Oh, and we're just going to three days. We're just going to talk randomness like you would have in a pub. Do you know what? Some of my favorite conversations have been in the pubs with people and you wake up in the morning, you know, you've had a few drinks and you think that was brilliant. Have you brilliant? Are you up for doing this coming on this podcast? Of course I am. I've, I think I've got my um, my first victims um, in the hot seats already. I've got um, a friend of mine called Ali Skews. Um, he's still pending at the moment, um, oh. but he, he is one of the most... We've all got a friend of ours that um, in their younger days was a bit of a... How can we put it? A bit of a said brawler. If you know what I mean, yeah, yeah, and but, oh, mate, mate, but I, he I is did so, time. so, I did time. he's so, so, <laughs> he's so, so funny. Yeah, he no. said that he's going to come in, That's and good. we've got my mate JJ. Um, he's a South African lad, and I've mm. been to Glastonbury with him. He came to my fortieth birthday. You, you was invited, but you never turned You're up. All right, I um, sent a card. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I didn't. Um, at, it got lost in the post. Happy birthday, thank you. And um, we've got <laughs> two guys that um, I didn't really know. I don't really know that well. Dan and Jules from um, Mr. Rich and the Caretaker. Check them out. I have done a, a couple of uh, podcasts, previous ones. Check them out. Look them up. It, Mr. Rich and the, um, the Caretaker. I can't remember which episode it was. I think it was about three episodes ago. So we look about 12, 13. L- listen, like to them all. listen to them all. Listen to them all. Yeah, listen to them all. And um, th- <laughs> they are the first victims of the drunk cast. So perhaps in about, I don't know, four or five months time, perhaps Christmas time, if you're up for it, we'll do, a, I, we'll do every like three months or something like that. I'll bring, See how well it goes. I'll bring we? some of me Guinness foreign export over 8.2%. Oh, you can come over the, You can come over on the first one. Mate, you'll like that. I don't have too many people in the studio here because it gets a bit chaotic. You know, loads of people shutting down the microphone. But why? Well, well, I tell you what. <laughs> no, no, that'll be good. Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? I mean, you've got all the equipment at home. Do you, do you fancy have. not doing it? I have. I, I, I honestly think I might end up doing it very soon. I think I should do something like that. Well, what would you do it on? Any well, ideas? Well, I mean, I did a show a while back on uh, on NCB called Sound Waves. Something around that. I mean, not just all music, but, you know, just general chat and, I don't know, chart stuff or, you know, 60s chart stuff. They still, I don't know. You're quite a musical lad, though, aren't you, really? You, you put your hand to anything. I always looked at you as a bit of a pianist. <laughs> it's been said before, yeah. Yeah. And you, what have you got there on your lap? Your pianist. What, what have you got there? But you made it sound now like I've just got it. <laughs> I've got it out. 
for, the, got, for the lads. Well, if you got, you got to do, give us a little bit of a play. What are you going to do? What are we going to do? A melodica as well. It seems a melodica. To be, it's quite popular. He's got a big red thing beneath his between his legs. Go on, play us or something. A bit of French. Oh, bonjour, je m'appelle Liam. Beautiful. Anything else? <laughs> um, uh, I always forget songs when I when I when well, just play, says, just play, play something. Anything. I think that's enough. It's good though, See, mate. I thought I'd put you off. No, it's good. Whew. Yeah, but perhaps you shouldn't do a podcast on that. Well, I, I, I wouldn't be able to make it stretch for two <laughs> minutes, let alone 30. I'll tell you what we'll do. Yes. Now we're in the musical spirit in mind. You're in the mood for dancing. Do you fancy a second tune from Roz? I'm going to say Port. Roz Birch, she's called. Roz Birch. And she sent me tr- tune number two, and it's called Same Eyes, Different View. And it's taken from her acoustic album, Voices and Keys. It was released January 2017, and it is available on Spotify. It is available on iTunes, Deezer, <laughs> and Amazon. Now, I haven't got a clue what Deezer is. You sound like William Hague, then. All the tracks are essentially live tracks in the studio with backing vocals added later. Old and new material, same eyes, different view, will be on the next EP that she's going to release, but it is evolved. That's what she says. Okay. Should we check it out? I'm liking it. Like she says, it is very soulful, and I'm a fan of the soulful kind of music. I'm loving it.
So that was Ros Birch with the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song, which is by the name of Same Eyes, Different View, taken from the acoustic album Voice and Keys. Um, You can check her out at uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Ros Birch Music. She is also on YouTube, Spotify, Deezer, iTunes and Amazon, all as Ros Birch. So check her out and I will put the links to all of those on the show notes for you to check out and find. Now, I've dropped Liam home. I'm back here editing the show. And for some reason, I do not know for why, part of the show has disappeared into the realms. I do not know where it has gone. So she asked me to, well, Roz asked me, I don't like calling people she, Roz asked me to bring up the topic of introducing a basic income living in a treehouse and s- turning cities into urban farms. Now, I do apologise, Roz. Um, I can't, we've lost what Liam said about introducing a basic income and we're, we, we've managed to come in halfway through living in a treehouse. So we're going straight back to Liam and me and try and work out the jibber-jabber that we are talking about. There's this whole... If you go to the other side of Callington, there's a little, little town in a Hobbitville where there's houses and trees and stuff. There's whole, there whole kind of rainforest cultures and places where oh, I get you now. Where they, you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't know what a, a normal town or a village looked like. They just live in the trees, and it's a way of life. And it, it's well, it's obviously got it, big difficulties, but well, you haven't got we, the trees in this country like they have abroad. If you, that's the problem, you but, couldn't you couldn't put it in a little like you know you'd have to have a big kick ass tree, wouldn't you? Penthouse treehouse. Saying like that. that though, my Nikki's cousin, um, she before Christmas, she um, sadly she's left us now. She's no longer with us. But her and her husband, they stayed in a a treehouse somewhere in Devon, I think it was. Okay. And I'll tell you what, mate, it looked absolutely amazing. I wouldn't mind checking that out and, and going into that treehouse. I mean, they're not as basic as they sound. You know, you no, say treehouse, you think plank of wood and a, a, a tent at the top, but it is like a proper log cabin in a tree isn't it a lot of them or a big cabin i can remember my, my friend's dad built him a tree house once yeah. and i was well jealous i wanted my dad to build me a, a, a tree house but i'm glad he didn't because no disrespect to my dad he's an amazing person but i think i would have probably died because the tree you know, it would probably fall into bits but the problem was is that i we never had any trees in our garden to build a tree house in well, that's, that's why you couldn't have built one well possibly possibly yeah. possibly another topic she's brought up yes. is um Turning cities into urban farms. Now, I haven't got a clue where she's coming from here and what she's talking about, but turning cities into urban farms. How would you do that? Well, there's, there's quite a bit of a, even in where we live, Salt Ash, which is in Cornwall, um, on Angleterre, Pray de Plymouth. That's my French lesson coming back. Um, now, I, w- I would pick up that <laughs> melodica thing and play it, but I'm not. Carry on. <laughs> we, um, 
I think there's a push towards, even though we're a town and quite a small town, there's a lot of allotments and a lot of big cities and towns have got a, a lot of a push for allotments and big waiting lists for people to, you know, grow their own stuff. But there's, um, especially well, London, but Bristol, there's big restaurants that have actually got, um, rooftop gardens and things like that. And they reckon that it's taken a while, but there's, uh, honey from London, central London honey. I mean, it sounds crazy, isn't it? That, that you could be able to get honey from anywhere in no, London, not at all. In London, but the plants and, and whole big restaurants. I've actually tried it. Big, big restaurants that actually grow all of their, you know, herbs and all of their vegetables and stuff on roofs. I've actually tried it, mate. Um, honey from London. Does it sound any different? No, it <laughs> tastes like smog. It tastes like diesel. But it's nice. It's like diesel honey. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I can um, I can see where she's coming from. Turning cities into urban farms. I, 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 I don't think you can do it. It would have to be like you but, say. It would have to be like, I can't see many cows oh, running around London. It's done. Yeah, I don't think it, yeah, but any kind of farming really. A lot of vegetables and stuff can be grown in the in the cities as well as the... The, the villages and the, the rural areas. I think it's, it's, good. it's good. Brilliant. Well, Liam, it, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you back in the studio. Thank you very we'll much. We'll have to do this again, mate. It's been a pleasure to be back and thank you very much for the port. Yeah, well, would you like another bit? Yeah. You, I've always been, he's been known <laughs> to hesitate, but never refused. Wow. Just before you do go, it's a very, very important day in the UK tomorrow. Tomorrow, we as English or British citizens get to choose who we would like to elect as our government. Mm. Um, What's your views before you go, Liam? I mean, I don't want to get this into a party political broadcast, but you you don't have to tell me, but which direction are you pointing in? it's It's a confusing one because, well, it's not, it's not confusing, but you vote for what you think is right and who you think is going to benefit you and your family. Um, it's changed for me. I guess I shan't be voting them. <laughs> it, it genuinely has changed for me. And maybe it's, again, because we're posties to do with work. It's, this. there's bits that you can pick out of all the arguments for all the different parties, really. Um, whether you think it's to do with Brexit and you think, I hate that word, by the way, as well, Brexit, the exit from the Euro- European Union, I call it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's whether you think Theresa May can do a better job of that. But then again, Jeremy Corbyn's, you know, pledged and proposed to do a lot of things that a lot of people don't think he'll ever do if he gets in power. It's closer than we think, I think. I, well, I, I don't want to be quoted on that to tomorrow uh, or the next day when it's probably a landslide for the Conservatives. <laughs> but Polls. Don't listen to the polls. No, well, that's it. Well, they said it with Trump. They said it with David Cameron the last time that he wasn't going to win outright, and he did. You don't really know because people say one thing, they say they're definitely going to vote for Labour and then look at it. Legend. Thank you for coming in, mate. Before you go, beards. Yes. Have you ever tried growing one? Yeah, a little bit. I get get bored though. get bored with it. I end up uh, trigger happy with the uh, shaver. Is it a fashionable thing that should be disbanded? Has it done its cause? Do you think beards are on the way out? I think, to be honest, I think it's slowed. I don't think people, uh, it's, it's, it's the hipster thing anymore, is it? I think people are, they're not even moustaching it anymore. I think clean shaven is the way to go. Well, we'll see what... Um, Do it now. We'll, what, we'll see what the next week has to say then, shall we? What Mike has to say next week. Next week we have got Mike in and um, he is going to be talking beards. Okay. He, I only know him as Beard because he's always had a beard. Um, is that his nickname? N- well, yeah, it's his nickname. He's called Beard. Oh, he's called it? Mike, but his nickname is Beard. And he's going to be coming in on the show next week. Really, really looking forward to it. He's, he's one of the most poshest people that I know. He's a dapper bloke. Well, he looks up. absolutely amazing. He's got a well-trimmed right. beard. He, 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 the beard can be a beautiful thing. He's all trim and proper. He wears all nice, nice clothes. And he oh. is coming in next week and he is going to be talking beards. So don't forget to tune in next week and we will talk beards. Anyway, Liam, thank you very much for coming in. I'm going to go and drop Liam home. No, because Liam, he's um, he's only 10 and um, his mum has let, let him come out. Well, I, I have had a couple of ports. So yeah, I'm going to drop him home now thankfully. and come back and finish editing this show. So, yeah, catch you in a bit. See you later. Well, there we have it. I'm here at about ooh, 11 o'clock. 
on Wednesday night, editing the show, pack of peanuts in hand, two glasses of lovely fine port consumed. And I'd just like to say thank you very much, Liam, for popping in, Liam Cloak. Thank you very much for Roz Birch for providing two beautiful songs. I hope you agree with me on that one. And like I said, if you would like to find Roz, I will put the the links onto my show notes um, for you to find her. And also, just get on my my page. Get on my page, www.jaff10.simplesite.com and just check it out. Get on iTunes. If you're an iTunes listener, please, please, please leave me five stars. Leave me some comments. It is really, really nice to hear from you. Or you can contact me, jaff10 at hotmail.com and tell me what's occurring. Anyway, guys, like I said, next week we are talking beards with Beard himself, Mike. He's coming in to talk about beards and... Well, I'm not going to say anything more about that. It's going to be really, really fun and interesting. And I've only got one thing else left to say. Look after yourselves and others. And remember, life may not be as crazy as you once thought it was. (laughs) 